Hey guys, it's Summing Rush. Today we're going to be watching, uh, he taught me how to say his name, Wojtek in his Object 430. He's on the map Mountain Pass, and I thought I'd feature this replay. So if you're hoping for some sort of epic 10k damage game, this isn't it. I thought he played really well and he contributed to his team's win directly, and that's why I wanted to show this replay. So if you're looking for some sort of epic game, this is not it. Click off the video. This is a well-played game, and I figured I'd show you what he did well and what I thought he could improve on. So that's going to be the premise for this video. So we're on the map Mountain Pass. It's a standard game. What I like to do on Mountain Pass, and this is always what you do on Mountain Pass, is you bring your tank to the J2 corner. Now, one of the risks associated with playing on J2 is it's very common to find yourself... Uh, not knowing who you're going to fight. It's really hard to predict who you're going to find in J2 if you don't have XDM because typically good players will go to J2 and bad players will go to like the north or they'll play in the middle or they'll camp in the middle or whatever. So if you have XVM, it's really easy to predict who's going to J2. If you don't, you kind of have to be cautious to start off. Now, what Voitek is going to do is he's going to go to H3 to start off the game. I don't like this position for the reason I just stated. Uh, if you don't know who you're going to be fighting when you're playing J2, so if you go to H3, you're not going to be able to run away from this flank very easily. That being said, he comes to here and he's got a lot of teammates, so it does work out. But, you know, if the enemy sent a lot of tanks here and he didn't have many teammates, he would find himself abandoned abandoned on this flank and he would have found that it would have been better to be in k3 so he doesn't get shots in the mid that's fine he pokes this corner because he's expecting people to drive around it you'll notice the timing of that this timing was perfect so he poked this corner at about 13 minutes and 45 seconds or so and that allowed him to poke before any of the enemy heavies got here so that's really good to note because you know if he had poked it a bit late, the enemy heavies would already be pre-aimed here, and he was able to get a free shot into people who were driving into position. So he got two shots for free right there. So he's playing this corner. He got two shots for free. That's good. That's the utility of this position, and if you can take it early, looks like you'll get lots of shots and heavies as they drive into position. He's looking for shots on the... Uh, that was the WZ. He's going to end up killing this IS-2 right here, who isn't playing the greatest. He's playing that ridge in an IS-2, not the smartest thing when there's as many enemies here as there are and he's basically just going to play this corner so he has 833 damage you'll notice he wants the side scrape but the problem is he's got so many teammates here that he can't so his decision not to side scrape was just because his teammates were there i think side scraping this situation is bad because he's blocking his teammates but it is what it is and what he's going to do is he's going to eventually change this position so a lot of people won't make a play that Wojtek just made right here he's crossing the open to get to this rock that he's on that's to his left the awesome thing about this rock is you have two ways to approach anyone who's in this e50s position so he plays this rock and he's going to end up pushing the way that i like to push on this side of the map and that's through this left turn side ish so what you can do right here and this is exactly what voitex doing is he's preventing himself from getting into a crosshair the low and the object 252 as they push through are going to be in a crosshair between the e50 and the tiger one so he plays this side doesn't get into a crossfire and he's going to push up and the reason he's doing that is to put this rock in between himself and the 50 TP. A lot of people just stop on this corner and fight it out and get shot by four enemies at once. He drives forwards, he kills the E50, and this is absolutely the right play. He gets, well, the E50 dies, and now he's got a Tiger in front of him, and he can deal with the Tiger, and you'll notice this rock is keeping him safe from the Conqueror and the 50 TP, who otherwise would be wrecking him right here. So he's fighting the Tiger, he gets the kill on the Tiger, he makes a bit of a mistake here and gets kind of lucky. Um... He wants to side scrape against the Conqueror, fair enough. He notices the Conqueror is looking away, but the Conqueror's got a really quick turret rotation, and this vehicle has a bit of a slow reverse speed. So the Conqueror is able to just snapshot him and put 442, or take 442 of his HP again. And once again, he pokes kind of badly here. He gets lucky because the 50 TP bounces, but it's like uh, his pokes in this situation aren't the greatest. It would have been just better if he didn't get shot by the Conqueror, waited until the Conqueror was reloading, and then poked on him. And, you know, at this point in time, he's won the flank. So Wojciech reads the map, or Wojciech tech reads the map right here what he decides not to do is he decides not to push down the two line that's a really strong play what generally happens on mountain pass and this is going to be exemplified by his teammates here who are all pretty much full hp by the way is whoever pushes down the two line like if you push down the two line and you're the south spawn on this map it's very frequently that you're going to die so he had how many tanks? Five. They're down to like four tanks right now on that side of the map. Maybe three. Yeah, now they're down to three. And all of them are going to die as they push through. So because he decides not to do that, um, he's going to put himself in a position to actually win this game because all of his teammates are going to die. And just simply surviving but not pushing down the two line he's, is going to allow him to win. So that's the important play right here. So he's looking at his map. He says, okay, the bridge is open. You can see that through the chat here. So we know he's concerned about losing the bridge in this game. In my opinion, in this context... It's fair, because this is a pub game, but he's asking the Sumua to guard the bridge. Um, 
<laughs> typing to teammates fair enough i wouldn't if you were like trying to tell your platoon mates what to do or you had someone to listen to you wouldn't want to commit a full hp tank to the bridge because they're obviously going to be distracted by anyone who's pushing through the mid like the t54 mod one and the lows and stuff who are pushing into their base so really it's fair to expect maybe someone flanking from the bridge but it's not uh probable enough to like mitigate a tank to that so he comes up to this fight he's fighting the emil and the amx 1357 the emil's gonna die his angle of approach here with the object 430's low gun depression sucks would have been better if he'd gone to sort of where the samuel was so he didn't have to fight against his depression on that ridge right there but that's just the way it is he's gonna end up chasing down this 1357 he misses a bunch of shots but it's like this guy's not a threat he doesn't really have to aim anyways so i'm not gonna hold that against him and what he's gonna do is he's gonna find himself in a position where he's playing the ice road all of his teammates have died, like two, you know, the low is going to probably die from his perspective, the low probably will die, and he's got two campers in base, so he decides to go back to the western side of the map, where that's his initial uh, presupposition, like his initial position, he wants to go to the middle of the map for whatever reason, and he decides not to. Now, I think this is a good play, but when you make a play like this, he's going to, his, obviously his goal is to flank anyone who's in this area, he wants to go after the 45 TP, he has to be really care about camping, he has to be careful for camping morons, so if you look at the enemy team lineup, they've got a Chiri who's unspotted, and they also have a Scorpion G unspotted, now if I was in Voitech's position here, I would expect those guys to be on the ice road, because they haven't been spotted all game, they're either probably camping on C2, or they could be to Voitech's right right here, so now knowing that, Voitech, you can see he's coming around this core corner really carefully he puts himself in a bush checks that and that's exactly what he has to do a lot of people just blindly drive into the open they'll think oh no one's been spotted on the ice road no one's there that's the wrong thing Voitech did the right thing in this situation and he checked that first now he's going to flank this 45 tp in this situation he fully aims his shot because he can he's, the guy's not looking at him he gets the kill in the 45 tp and now he's going to make a play that i'm not so sure is <laughs> there you go <laughs> it was it would have been the wrong one to push up the ice road because the p44 pantera is pushing into the mid and he can very easily deal with that now once again he doesn't know if anyone's going to be behind him so he should pretty much just be watching the map as he as he has his rear to the ice road because for all he knows some idiot camping in base is going to push down that road and you can see that's actually what's going to happen though. <laughs> when I was originally watching this replay, I thought it would be the Scorpion G because why would the Scorpion G be in the middle of the map? The Scorpion G would probably be here. And if you had nothing to shoot at, you know, the ice road's reasonable to go fight Voitech. Instead, it's actually going to be the Chiri who ends up appearing really quickly. The guy's going to push down the ice road. It's, it's a bit delayed. The guy should have done it like 45 seconds ago, but he's going to run into the Chiri. And this is where he basically... You know, if he was in any other tank, this wouldn't work out. It's a Chiri, the guy's a bad player, he just sort of rushes into him, and uh, this Chiri doesn't do the greatest. Now, he's going to chase that Chiri down, that's absolutely the right play, and then once this Chiri dies, he's going to find himself in a position where there's a Yag Panther, a Scorpion G, and a... Jesus, that guy got some fire. There's basically three tanks left, the problem is he's got three teammates. Okay, so... What do you want to do in a situation where the enemy has three tanks left? You don't know where the one of the tanks is, so the last tank's full HP. I personally don't know the, the health of the Scorpion G, and, you know, that 50 TP is probably going to kill the Tiger. There you go, the Tiger dies. So, what do you do when you're in Voitech's position? Well, he's going to push into the enemy base. This is fair, because he knows where the Scorpion G is. If he wasn't... Uh, let's say, if the Scorpion G wasn't spotted at this point, pushing through the ice road would not be smart, because really, where can the Scorpion G be? Really, this is where you'd expect him to be, because TDs just sit there all game and camp. So, he's pushing down the ice road, this is fair. He should expect to find the Yank Panther in C3, because the Yank Panther hasn't been spotted. The Yank Panther could also be AFK, in which case, you know, he would get lit, that would result in the Scorpion G coming back to defend the base, and that's just the situation he's in. So he's pushing into, presumably, a Yag Panther, and he doesn't know where the Scorpion G is. The Scorpion G is probably rotating to go shoot at the low right now, because the low just got lit. That would be reasonable for the Scorpion G. Like, that would be a reasonable play. So Wojtek comes to this position, and he finds the Yag Panther, who would have been moving otherwise, and basically catches that guy off guard. He falls back, because his gun depression was fighting him here, and the Yag Panther's got a really high DPM. The Yag Panther bounces one, he puts a second shot to the Yag Panther, and that was a high roll. <laughs> but it ended up working out. 390 times 2. 
would not normally kill a Yike Panther in that situation, so normally he would have lost some HP, but it's the way it is. He got two high rolls, and that was really lucky in that instance. Now he's got to deal with a lone Scorpion G, who really, you don't know where he is. So what he, Void Tech's deciding to do is he's deciding to come to this position that would allow him to check this area to shoot at the Scorpion G, potentially. And now the Scorpion G is like obviously come back to base to deal with Void Tech. What he's going to do is he's going to fall back, and this is exactly what he has to do. So I'm going to pause this because a lot's going on. Most people in a situation like this where they've got a Scorpion G who's full HP in front of him, uh, in front of them would load HE and they would try to kill the Scorpion G. First off, HE would be the wrong ammo choice right here because he's 1150 HP. 530 times 2 would not, I mean, you could potentially high roll and get lucky, but really it's not worth the risk because HE hits guns and tracks and sometimes only does 100 damage. So AP is the right choice right here. The next play that Voitech is making is he's falling back now that once again is really really reasonable unfortunately like fortunately for him the scorpion g puts the yag panther in between both of them so what Voitech does is he decides to drive forwards and he uses the yag panther here for cover now if i was him right now i'd be scared about getting shot underneath the yag panther right you can see that gap right there if the scorpion g was intelligent he could try to take advantage of that that being said the scorpion g falls back and the scorpion g manages to bounce this shot which good job to Voitech for side scraping and that's going to create an opportunity for Voitech to use his tank to actually yolo the scorpion g now the reason this works out and this is actually why it was so great of him to climb this hill while cert you know while playing this map is he's going to have extra speed to doing it so the 430 is a slow tank so what he's going to do is because he's above the scorpion g he can just drive downhill and normally he would not be able to circle the scorpion g but because he was uphill that guy's gun is not able to catch up to him and he's able to get his eighth kill of the game and uh, finish that one off so that's the replay i thought it was really well played i thought he made a lot of good decisions he got obviously the 7k damage is a huge factor because um the chiri basically gave him 1250 hp for free but you know apart from that and apart from his high damage number i thought it was really well played these are the types of plays that you can actually replicate in your own game so i really liked his decision to fall back and his decisions to flank the mid and then push up the ice road i thought all of that was really really good and uh, that's why I'm featuring this replay. So let's go take a look at the end plates and we'll go from there. So <laughs> I thought I'd apologize for my pronunciation of his name. He did try to teach me through email. So, you know, that went well. <laughs> but anyways, that was a mastery badge. He got a Radley Walters, uh, Brothers in Arms, Cool Headed, High Caliber, and a Top Gun. That was 6,839 damage. He came first place by a long shot, 1682 base XP, profited 78k credits, and 24 shots fired 23 of them hit 20 of them penned and that you know in my opinion was a phenomenal game i thought he did really well thought him thought he made a bunch of good decisions those are the types of replays that i like to feature on my channel so um yeah i hope you enjoyed if you want to see more be sure to hit the like and the subscribe button and if you want to send me your replays feel free to do so by emailing me at lemmingrushreplays at gmail.com anyways that's it for now bye <laughs>